want to welcome all of you and welcome all of you who are joining us on our live stream service. Man, it's also good to see so many people in the choir this morning. Hey, guess what? There's still room. If you want to come and be a part of this magnificent team, I would love to invite you to come and be a part of that. And uh, man, it, it, God is going to do some great stuff. But anyway, it's good to see everybody here. Let me grab my little clicker here. Sorry, guys. I thought I had it in my pocket. And there we go. All right. Today, what I want to do is I want to continue with our series of uh, basically making church the place to be. We're get, wrapping this thing up. We just got a couple of more messages that I'm going to be sharing on this topic. And I hope that it's been encouraging to you, uplifting to you, but also challenging you. Because one of the things that we need to know beyond a doubt, my friend, is God has called the church to reach people for Jesus. And that's what our job is. That's what he wants us here. And, and, and I want us to do today to look at the title is Doing Ministry Right. I shared in the first service today that there's a lot of ways to do ministry wrong. And the more I'm in this job, the more I find out I do a lot of things wrong sometimes. But there's a lot of ways to do it wrong, but God wants us to do ministry the right way. Amen? That's what it's all about. And we need to know the right way. And the way that we know is that we follow the Scripture. So many times I think we get so wrapped up in the, what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to do it, that we forget that there is a guideline here. There is a guide for us, and it's called the Bible. And God has laid out for us the way to do it right. Jesus has even given us an example of how we are to do ministry right. And I, that's found over in the book of Matthew chapter 9. So if you have your Bibles and turn there, Matthew chapter 9, we're going to be reading verses 35 and 36, looking at how we as a church can do ministry right. And that's what we want to be able to do. So if you have your Bibles, turn there. Matthew 9, 35 and 36. Let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's Word. You at home joining us. We hope you'll turn your scriptures over there as well. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 and 36. And it says this. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel in the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Father, we come to you today and we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for allowing us to be here in the great time of praise and worship that we just experienced. And now, Father, as we get into your word, I pray that that sweet spirit would main, be maintained here. That God, our attentive spirit to you would be focused there. And that, God, you would take the messages that, that the message that I'm about to preach and, God, turn it into a blessing for everyone listening. I pray, Father, that the words I'm about to say are not, will not be my words, but, Lord, they'll be yours. I pray, Father, that the message is not one that I've made up, but one that you've given me. Father, I pray the response from your people would be as you desire it. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. We've been sharing over the last several months now the idea of making church the place to be and the church will be the place to be when we as the church do things right amen not not right in the right way but correctly when we do them the way God has designed the church to do them that my friend is the key and we want to do that here at First Baptist West my desire is to continue to lead this church into doing ministry the right way because as I said there's so many ways to do it wrong that we now have to be focused on doing it right. So what I want to look at here is we follow Jesus' example, and there's three areas that I want to look at today. Now, I've used these three areas before whenever I taught in our leadership, in our Sunday school small group leadership. I, I use this, and this is the three points are from Alan Taylor in his book, Sunday School Done Right, but I want to let you understand that all of this works well for the church. That if we're going to reach people for Jesus, if we're going to love God, love people, and we're going to see lives change, then this is how I believe we're going to do it. We look and we see Jesus had the three things that he did that I believe that we will see the church be effective in, when we do these things. And the first one is very simple, reach people. Now, it sounds simple, but it's not so simple, amen? To reach people, that means to uh, go in and, and, and to do what is required to reach people, there must be, listen, a strong conviction in the church 
There must be a strong conviction in our small groups, our Sunday school groups, our other Bible study groups. There must be a strong conviction in the individual themselves in order for us to reach people for Jesus. My friends, the church needs to gain back a conviction of reaching people. We say we love God. We say we love people. We say we want to see lives change. But my friends, we better grab hold of that concept and we better be convicted on those grounds to be able to reach people for Jesus. So what does that mean? That means, first of all, it means to go. If you'll read the very first part of this text, it says, then Jesus went about all the cities and villages. I want you to know what he didn't do. Jesus did not find a central place and say, okay, folks, every morning I'm going to be here at 10 o'clock. You all show up and I'm going to have some great stuff for you. What Jesus did, the Bible says that he went, he, he went to them. He went to all the villages. He went to all the places in that whole area. Jesus went out from there. He did not wait on people to come to him. So that means that go from here, but also where they are. We cannot stay in here and reach people. Amen? This cannot be the spot where we say, well, this is where we're going to reach people. Because we've got to be like Jesus. We're not going to stay in this building. Amen? We've got to go. And so we've got to understand when Jesus went around, he was reaching people. His desire was to show himself to them. So not only go, but also to seek. Now listen, all of you are going to be leaving here in just a little while. Amen? I'm not going to promise you when. I'm not going to promise you how long you folks at home. You're not going to stay in your house. You're going to go somewhere. But the difference is when you go from here, you must go seeking, paying attention, looking for people, if you will. Jesus, as as we see his task in Luke 19.10, said, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He left from where he was and he had an intention. He wanted to go find out where these people are. So he went seeking them. So when you leave here today, you're going to go from here praying that if you're going to be reaching people, you're going to be praying, God, reveal somebody to me. Put them in my path today. Let me have an intention of reaching. Folks, listen to me. Reaching people is an intentional act. We have to decide that we're going to do it. We can't just sit here and and just say in this room, well, here's where we reach. Folks, can I tell you, I shared you a few weeks ago, majority of people in this room aren't lost. I I, I hope, I pray. Amen. As a matter of fact, probably a lot of people at home watching this, they're not lost. We're gathered together to worship. So what that means is if we're really going to change people's lives, if we're going to reach people for Jesus, that means we have to be intentional outside of here. So when we leave, be like Jesus and go seeking and saving that which was lost. And not only do we go, not only do we seek when we reach, but we compel them. In other words, we speak up. The master said in Luke 14, 23, the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house might be filled. So we need to go out and compel people. We need to go out and, 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 and urge them with, with intensity, with a desire to see them change and not just say, well, I hope it happens. But my friends, listen, in the church today, we need to hear First Baptist West and you at home, you need to be listening and saying, God, show me that I can go and reach people. Jesus didn't stay in one spot. His intent was to go reach them for his name. So not only are we to reach people, because the Bible then says, so then faith comes by hearing, but hearing by the Word of God. So what does that mean? That means we are to teach people. They will come to Jesus when we're teaching them what Jesus said. That that we go out and we we share with them, we, we teach them those things. So what do we do? What do we teach? Well, the Bible says this. 
in Matthew 28, 20, now we know the first part of 19 and 20 says go and make disciples. Here he says to them, teaching them to what? Observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So what Jesus is saying here is what we to do is we are to observe all things, teaching them to observe. In other words, teach them to obey the word. Teach them how. Show them how. Live it so we are to, to teach them to observe all things. But for instance, listen to me, they must first know. They've got to know it. The Bible tells us in Matthew 4, 4, but he answered to him and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Folks, we've got to be declaring Scripture. We've got to be showing them. We got to be telling, and, and when here in our church, one of the things that we have to be committed to is making disciples. We must be a church that stands on the Word of God. We must be a church that teaches the Word of God. We must be a church that lives the Word of God. And we must show the world how to, it is to be obedient, not how it is to blend in. But we got to teach them how to be obedient to the Word. Listen, we even talked a few weeks ago that we're to not be, uh, we're, we're not to, to form into ourselves into the world. He says, don't be conformed, but be transformed. So our acts of obedience is a, is a lesson. So we teach them to observe, and then we do it by living by example. Live an example. Folks, can I tell you that teaching Teaching is a whole lot more than spewing out facts and information. As a matter of fact, and I've shared this with our staff, if all we're going to do in, is to spew out facts and information, that's easy to do. It's easy to get a class and, and Bible study and teach information. But here's what I found out, and here's what I truly believe, that if that's what we're doing as a church, if all we're doing is spewing out facts and information, folks, that's not only easy, but I found out that's lazy. It's lazy to do that. It is so simple to get a group and say, well, all I want to do is to spew facts to them. Tell them what the Bible says. Folks, listen, I'm not disputing you need to do that. But part of teaching is demonstrating it to them. Living it in front of them. The greatest way that we can teach our kids is to speak the word to them. But you know what? It better be more than just speaking and telling our kids what the Bible says. It is that we are doing what the Bible says. That's how we as parents teach. Listen to me. That's how we as leaders of the church need to be teaching. We can't just be telling stuff. Show it to them. Let them see it in action. That's what Jesus did. Jesus went out, and he, the Bible says that he went to all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and, and healing every sickness. So Jesus went out, and this is what he did. But we as a church need to do some difficult stuff. When we're teaching, man, we ought to be demonstrating it. It ought to be what they see in us. They hear it from me, but they better see it as well. Because if all they're doing is hearing fact, it doesn't penetrate their life. So not only do we reach people, not only do we teach people, disciple them, the last one is that we minister to them. We minister to the people. Now look, see here. In verse 35, again, I just read it, that then Jesus went out of all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel. So he went out, he went, he taught. But then listen what else he did. He preached in the, the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. What he did now was he went out ministering to them. He didn't just go out and teach them and he touched their lives he affected them he ministered to them he met where they, 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 they he met them where they were he met their needs now friends listen to me i want to share something with you this is the part of the ministry of of going out and and changing people's lives and making church the place to be this is the part i believe that taxes the church the most Here's where, as a matter of fact, a lot of people inside the church at this point of making church the place to be are going to start going backing off. Uh-uh. I don't mind spewing facts. 
I don't mind going out and saying, hey, you need to come to church. But man, when it gets to this point, this pastor is really uncomfortable. This is where we struggle a lot of times in the church. What I'm talking about here is and why this is so hard. And I've prayed over this my whole ministry. I've prayed, God, why is ministry so difficult for us? Why is it so difficult for me? And it's because of what reaching people, teaching people, and ministering to them really is all about. Is we understand that this idea takes place through relationships. Here's where i got to get involved. Here's where you as a church, you at home, here's where we got to get involved in people's lives. And folks, that's not always easy. And it's not always comfortable. Sometimes it gets even a little messy when we get involved in their lives. It's emotional on us to have to go out and to minister to them. As a matter of fact, I believe with all my heart, this idea of relationships is becoming a dying art in our society I believe it's a dying art and what I mean by that is because the social media has become our basis of relationships <laughs> what a joke I know them because we're friends on Facebook folks do you realize that you can do stuff on Facebook and never really involve yourself in anybody's life now you hey now here's what I found out you involve yourself in their business but you don't involve yourself in their lives. Can I get an amen? Yeah, we really get involved in their business. We like being in their business because I want to tell them about their business. But social media allows you in their business, but it doesn't allow you into their lives. Can I tell you not everything you read on Facebook is real? Whoa, hello. You can leave out of here and say, God gave divine revelation today. Not everything you read on Facebook is real, so you really don't know the real person just because you're friends with them on social media. But that's where we do our best interacting now, right? That's where we do our best building of relationships. We talk to them on Facebook. We text them. We email them. Jesus said, man, get in their life. This is why it's so comfortable, because it's built on relationships. And my friend, the church, listen to me, the church ought to be a place where strong relationships are built. Because we do interact into each other's lives. We know about each other. We know what's going on. We know really deep inside because we've spent time. Then we go out into that world and we make a relationship. Now here's where it even gets more uncomfortable sometimes for people in the church that we are to make relationships outside of this place. Do you know that we're supposed to get to know lost people? Now I hear a lot of people say, well now preacher, the Bible says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Okay, now, that's not getting to know them. That means don't get tied up with them. Don't get intermingled in such a, a way that you get pulled down. But my friends, listen, how are people going to get to where they listen to you is when they know you. Someone once told me, my, my, I call him my preacher dad, my preacher dad, whenever I was struggling with even doing this, because one of the things I told him, I said, man, I tell you what, I've never been to seminary. I've never, I've never even been in a Bible, I've never even been in a Bible class, except the ones I've taught or go to seminars. I've never taken a seminary class on the Bible, and so I was worried, man. I was intimidated by the fact of going into this ministry. And that, that man looked at me, praise God for him. He said, Harold, your people will not know, will not care how much you know until they know how much you care. I said, hmm. I know I can care for people. I know I can love people. So this is the idea Jesus is talking about. He said, quit worrying too much about throwing out facts and information on this social media and actually get into their lives. Find out, build a relationship with them. And so when we go out into this world, we are to get to know those who are lost so that they can see that we actually care about them. But it's building of relationships. Not only is it to take on the context of relationships, but it's also the second thing is knowing and providing for people's needs. 
that we know their needs. Well, how do I know their needs? But knowing them. Getting involved with their life. But listen to what Jesus did there. He said, he went, preached the gospel, and he healed the sick of every disease among the people, and he provided for their needs. He found out where they were, he saw their needs, and he took care of them. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 27, 23, it says this, Be diligent to know the state of your flock. In other words, know how they're doing. So you say, well, who's my flock? Well, your flock are, are those people that God has put you in contact with. If you're a, if you're a, a uh, deacon, your flock are the Sunday, are, are the, the, the families on your family list. I encourage every time I meet with the deacons, I'm going to meet with them tonight. Guess what I'm going to talk about? I'm going to talk about them getting involved with how your families are doing. And they ought to be knowing how they're doing because they ought to be checking up on families. Deacons, that's your flock. Sunday school teachers, know how your flock is doing. Who's your flock? Your Sunday school class. You ought to know how they're doing because you're in contact with them. You have some way formed in your groups how that you're going to know what's going on. Directors, our leaders, how do you know what's going on? How do you know the state of your flock? You, you check on them. Not in a mass email, not in a mass text, but you check on them individually. Find out how they're doing. Be diligent to know the state of of your flock and then listen what else it says the last part attend to their needs do not do not church get wrapped up into this idea I see what's going on I'm going to pray for you I'm pray for now you say, now preacher, you're not saying pray for anybody? No, pray for them. But if somebody's hungry, what? Feed them. If they're thirsty, what? If they're naked, if they're lonely, man, don't just say, I'll pray for you and then walk away. Pray for them. Absolutely pray for them. But then meet their need. If you see something that you can do for them, do it. Be doers of the Word, not hearers only. Man, Jesus talked about those religious leaders all the time and said, guys, you shouldn't just be telling people you're going to pray for them. Go and take care of them. Be diligent to know the state of your flock and attend to your herds. Attend to them. Man, I know I've got farmers here. I know some are watching. You don't just look out there and see, see everything going on and go, well, there's one out in the ditch. I guess I'll pray for it to get out. What do you do? You go take care of it. As a matter of fact, Jesus, Jesus even put it something like this. He said, if you're tending to a bunch of them, 99 of them, and you find one of them is out here hurting, pretty clearly, I believe he says, leave the 99, go get the one. Right? Leave the 99, get the one. Don't just pray for the one while you play with the 99. Go get the one. Bring them. Be diligent to know the state of the flock and attend to your herds. Which then will bring, bring us back to this point. Understanding that one-size-fits-all ministries don't work well. The thing that I have found out is that every section and every piece of our church has to have its own intention, its own purpose, its own desire. Because I can't sit out here and say, okay, all of you do this same thing. Thing. because guess what the people you're dealing with don't have the same thing as the people that others are dealing with so you can't do a one size fits all you can't look at another church and say well you know what that church did this well we'll do that now well listen that may not work here I've told you many many times folks we are First Baptist West amen we're not First Baptist East we can't do everything that First Baptist East does but they shouldn't be doing everything we do 
First Baptist, Cameron, other Baptist churches. One ministry doesn't fit all of us. We are First Baptist West. And so we do what we do. We do what God has led us to do. One size doesn't fit all. Each ministry is different. And the needs of the individuals are different. Can I tell you this? That individual attention is paramount to a ministry. You better be able to give individual attention to your people or you're going to lose them. Amen? You better give individual attention. That's why our church is structured the way it is. Man, I, 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 I've pastored in small churches where I could, man, I could do everything with every person in the church. One of the most difficult situations for me was when I got into the bigger churches and then and, and here. Folks, I can't, I can't be with every one of you all, all week. I can't. That's why we have deacons who are now broken into smaller groups. That's how why we have small groups which are broken into even smaller groups. That's why we even have home groups which are broken up into small Because we need individual attention is paramount to the survival of a ministry of a church. You've got to be able to give individual attention. You say, well, we just don't have the time. Well, folks, you better make time or you're about to lose some stuff. Can I tell you, one size doesn't fit all in ministry, just like one size doesn't fit all in clothing. They may lie to you and tell you it does. Amen? Can I warn you about something? Just because it says you can put it on doesn't mean you should be wearing it. One size might fit all, it just doesn't fit them all the same. Amen? So guess what? It doesn't work in ministry either. So to minister to me is paramount. Even and especially in this COVID crazy life we're living. So often at this point, here's where many churches are going, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to back off. Then when it's all clear, we're going to jump in. Folks, can I tell you, if you do that, you might not have anything to jump back into. Especially during these times. Listen to what it says on down verse 36, and I'm going to wrap this thing up. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. Why? Why did he look out there and see something that... Listen, he looked out there and he saw something that ate him to the core. It bothered him. He, he was moved with compassion. Why? Look what it says. Because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Can I declare to you today, church, that we ought to be able to look out to society and we ought not be afraid of them, we ought not be angry at them, we ought not be trying to turn away from them, we ought to look at them and have such a broken heart for them because they are lost. They are lost, my friends. They are scattered and weary and tired and they need to have hope. You don't have to look long to see that out there. So the church, we, First Baptist West, you at home, wherever you are, you ought to be able to look out there and say, God, help me have compassion for them because I see they're tired and they're weary because they're running around, they're lost like somebody without a shepherd. And God, you are that great shepherd. Help me do that my friends now can i tell you now is the best time we've ever had in a long time to minister to people if we'll just do it that's going to make church the place to be when we're willing to minister to them go individually talk to them help them wouldn't you love to be a part of church that does ministry right oh now come on that's a good question wouldn't you, I'll ask it again so everybody look at me, pay attention, this is going to be a good question that you need to answer, okay? I, I'm almost done, I promise you, I got, according to that, about a minute. Wouldn't you love to be a part of a church that does ministry right? You know how to do that? No, it's not go find another church from here, stay here. 
It's to surrender yourself to, as an example to follow as Jesus did and make First Baptist West the church to be, the place to be. When we surrender to ministry. You all heard that story. I'm sure I've shared it here before about a man named the Great Blondin. The Great Blondin was back in the early 1800s, and so he, he was a, a trapeze artist, or, or, or a tight rock, tight walk roper, tight rope walker. Yeah, I got it. Okay, that's what he did. And he was t- out over Niagara Falls, and he had walked across it one time, and he got back to the crowd, and he said, how many of you enjoyed that? And they went, yeah. He said, how many of you would like to see me do it again? Yeah. He said, how many of y'all think I could do it with a, in a wheelbarrow, with a wheelbarrow? Yeah, we believe you can. He said, how many of you would like, like to see me take someone, put them in the wheelbarrow, and walk across Niagara Falls? And everyone went, yeah, we would love to see it. And he said, who's my first volunteer? <laughs> Who would love to be a part of a church that does ministry right? Who's my first volunteer? Who's the first one going to say, Pastor, here I am. Here I am. I want to be that person. I want to be a person that reaches people for Jesus. I want to be somebody that teaches them by living my life in obedience to God. And I want to be that individual who will be able to go out and minister to meet their needs. I will know what's going on with my flock. I will attend to their needs. And I will glorify Jesus through it so that people can come to Jesus so that I can love God, I can love people, and I can see lives changed. Who wants to be the first to help? My friends, all you got to do is say, God, here I am. Here I am. Hands are up. Hands are up. Very good. Praise God. Let's make this the place to be. Because we're doing it not the way we chose to do it. We're doing it because of the way Jesus did it. Like everybody bow your head, ask the praise team to come on back up. I know it took a little longer than that one minute, but that's okay. But right here, right now, my friend, if you know that there's something missing in your heart, if you're at home today and you know that there's something missing in your life, and that joy and that peace that you that you want, and you've been feeling like these people here that we just read about that were lost and confused, and you you've like you you it's almost like you've had no shepherd no guidance then would you come to Jesus today I want to offer that to you my friend right here where you are call upon his name if you're if you're watching us then listen you can call upon his name where you are <clears throat> in just a moment I'll be down front to pray with any of you here others at home if you'll call our number 5364227 if you'll call that number I promise you someone will be listening someone will be there to pray with you because we want to know that you've been affected by the gospel of Jesus Christ and if there's something, listen, if there's something we can need that you need that we can help you with, we want to be a part of that as well. We want to help you. Please, if there's something we can do for you as a church to pray for you, not only pray for you, but actually help you, man, let us know. We want to be a church that's ministering to people. Leaders, your small groups, Sunday school leaders, directors, deacons, know the state of your flock today would you commit to that commit to helping me helping this church minister to people we'll be down front as we sing we're going to ask you to stand in just a moment praise God together again one last song then we're going to wrap this thing up but I want to encourage you today today would you turn your heart to Christ today would we be doing things right? Father, hear our, hear our prayers today. Speak to us. Open us up to one another and to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand and sing.